So in this example, I want you to find the nth term, the tenth term, and the twenty-fourth term of the sequence you can see in green there. Okay, we've got 2, 8, 14, 20, and so on forever. Okay, now in red, this is a review of the previous video, we talked about trying to find the zero term. And the zero term is the term before the two. Okay, so let's maybe start with that. All right, so, well, actually, we're going to have to start with the common difference. That will help us find the zero term. What's happening? Well, it looks like we're adding 6 there, and 6 there, and 6 there. And it's very consistent from what we can see so far because it is an arithmetic sequence. That's what it means. We're either adding or subtracting the same number each time. Now, I could keep going and manually just keep adding 6 until I can answer my questions over here on the left, but that's inefficient. And we also want you to know how to do the algebraic term, which is the nth term. So the common difference then is going to be 6, okay? And it's going to be a positive 6. We're adding 6 each time. All right, now again, the question is, what's the zero term? So we want to find out before the 2, what number did we start with? Well, if you're going to subtract 6 from 2, what is that going to be? That's right, negative 4, okay? So the zero term is negative 4. Okay, so we start with negative 4, then we're going to start adding 6 repeatedly. Okay, the difference, I mean, the uh, idea here with the n is because that's the number of the term. All right, now let's take a look. If n is 0, and we put this in our formula here, that would be 6 times 0. All right, let's do the math and figure that out. What is the zero term? Well, 6 times 0 is 0, and negative 4 plus 0 is negative 4. Okay? And we already talked about how we'd have to start with a negative 4 even before we get to the 2. All right, now what if we want to know the first term? Now, up here in green it says 2, but let's double check that. So we'd have negative 4 plus the common difference of 6 times 1 because we want to know the first term. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 plus a negative 4 would be 2. Okay, so we're just kind of testing our algebraic term to make sure. Uh, let's go ahead and answer the um, second question. What's the tenth term? Well, we start with the negative 4, 0 term, and we're going to add to it multiples of 6. 10 multiples of 6 because it's the tenth term. So that would be 60. Take away 4. 56. All right, so over here, the answer would be 56. Now let's go ahead and fill in number one here. Um, usually, if the negative uh, zero term is negative, we put it at the end. It just is kind of a basically proper form. So just to kind of clean it up here, that would be 6n minus 4. And 56 is the tenth term. And let's finish this up. Let's find the 24th term. Negative 4 plus 6 times 24. Alright, let's do a quick uh, multiplication problem here. 24 times 6. 24. Carry the 2. 12 plus 2 is 14. Alright, 144. All right, now let's kind of take this to some graph paper. On this graph paper, I have the blue dots representing the numbers of another arithmetic sequence. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is record what those numbers are. All right, it looks like um, if this is the number of term, okay, these are my n numbers then this number represents the number of the sequence, what actual number shows up, okay? So if we're going in this direction, this is the x-axis, and I go over one <clears throat> location there. If n is 1, let's make a little table here, then it looks like we go up 1 there. So the first number of the sequence is 1. Alright, so 
we're going to start with 1. All right, now if we go over 2 in the n direction, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if n is 2, the sequence number is 5. All right, so so far we have a 1 and a 5. And we just keep recording that as we go. On the third n here, the third term, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So when n is 3, the term of the sequence is 8. All right, now we do have a missing dot right there. Okay, we can easily figure it out, but I'm going to just leave this blank for now. So when n is 4, we have a mystery number right now. Now on our graph, of course, we do have the next dot. So if n is 5 going over this direction, we actually go up how far? 2, 4, 6, 8. Whoops, I need to count correctly here. 2, 4, 6, 8. I see what I did. It's going to have to be a 9. I better add correctly here. All right, so we've got 9 right there, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. All right, so we have got a number sequence that goes forever until we run out of graph paper, of course. And as uh, you'll, you saw in the other part of the video, what we have to do is figure out the common difference and the zero term, and that's the key to finding our algebra um, representation here. Okay, so the common difference is 4 each time, isn't it? So I'm going to skip a number there, but obviously 9 plus 4 would be 13. So there would be a 13 in that spot right there. And then if I add 4 more, that would be 17. So my common difference is 4. Okay, I'm going to multiply that by the number of the term we're talking about, so it's 4n. Now the other question is, what is the zero term? Now if I'm going to add 4 each time, then if I go backwards, I'm going to subtract 4. So what's 1 take away 4? Negative 3. So negative 3 is my zero term. All right, so have a zero term of negative 3, a common difference of 4 multiplied by whatever term we're talking about. All right, um, if we put it in a little simpler format here, since 3 is negative, let's put it at the end. So the nth term is represented by 4n minus 3. All right, what's the tenth term? Let's substitute the 10 in there in place of n. Okay, so 4 times 10 which of course is 40, take away 3, 37. Now I could have found it by just extending my number sequence forever and kept adding 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, but of course we can jump right to it if we know the algebraic expression for it. The 24th term is 4 times 24, which is 96, take a 3 away, 93. Okay, much quicker, much easier using the algebraic expression. All right, good job. Thanks for watching.